He's hey, dead. You know. you got what? Alive. Yeah, he's been dead. He's been dead. I think you should just start it while we're talking. <laughs> Probably, I just never know what you're going to say. Like, yeah, I, gotta be I don't know what we're going to say either. I'm just glad you came into the part you came into. Are we actually live? You're yeah. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. Good morning. This is Unwanted Opinions, broadcasting live at a Workspace Collective. I'm your host, Justin McDonald, here with Matt Fisher. No noise. That was some noise. <laughs> Stand in fact checker, Mustache Johnny, Whoop. and executive producer, Dave Miller. Thanks for joining us. Johnny, thanks for yeah. uh, pulling up. He's Very happy to be, to be here. here. You're as prepped as. Well. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys discuss that beforehand? We did. We had a lot of time to prep. Yeah. Okay. Because he was actually here on time. He beat me here. He was waiting for me out outside the front. Well, that's. I thought I was dreaming. That's. Yeah, I was a just beautiful like, dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, this can't be because usually you'd be getting here right about this time. Yeah, eight oh one. So my wife asked me, I think for the first time ever, "Hey, who's the uh, guest speaker on today's show?" <laughs> it's like a symposium. Who's the yeah? Guest? Who is the guest speaker? <laughs> and I was like, "Oh well, uh, we don't have one, but Johnny will be standing in for Jesse because Jesse's not feeling well." She's like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." Uh, yeah, and she's. Kind of like mentioned that she liked us having guests on. I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I guess we need to try to make that a more regular thing. I know we've had people reach out and we've reached out to people, uh, but it's one of those things that, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I never know how people feel. <laughs> so if you like guests, let us know know in the comments. Um, I know it takes us a little bit for people to kind of catch I on. I do like to work. read the comments. From people that only tuned in for the guests? Yes. Who have no idea what this is. And it's, those are my favorites, so I do like guests for that reason. Yeah. I I enjoy the awkwardness of a lot of things. And so um, it started when I mean, we've had a few, but one of my favorites was when Layton was on. And, and, so, and you didn't let her speak. Yeah, someone was like... <laughs> Uh, it was good, except for the guy in the purple shirt kept cutting you off. Yeah. Who, who even is he? Yeah. Why is he even on this show? Right. <laughs> Strange so, that you just tune into the very tail end. So I think that uh, what we're going to have to start doing is prepping our, our guests. Because our guests you know, typically watch the show. They know the format. But it's like, hey, by the way, when you tell people you're going to be on this show... Let them know to tune in for the last 20 or so minutes <laughs> because they log on and they're like, what the heck is going yeah, this on? This isn't Barbara Walters' yeah. 60 minutes. <laughs> right. There is very little journalistic integrity. I'm just uh, kidding. Yeah. We take it to the very highest little, standard. Says, the fact little. checker with the, the, the computer's just open. It doesn't I'm, get used. Honestly, I, if you've watched news in the past two to three years, I think that we have higher integrity I standards. I think so, too. Well, I, it br well, before you got here, Johnny and I were talking because he brought up this video of, you know, it was like one of those, I almost called it a Vine, uh, uh, Instagram reel of a TikTok probably, yes. you yeah. know, um, the kid playing the piano and this guy walks in and like hangs up his phone and walks over and starts playing too. And Johnny was just like, people actually probably think that that was like real and like just randomly happened and randomly had a camera out yeah. and maybe it did, but I was just like, you know, people are suspending their disbelief for like happy videos like that. But then I also think they're suspending their disbelief when it comes to like certain news articles and like world events. Whereas, you, you, yeah, you're, 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 you're in agreement. Whereas it used to be for like, I'm gonna go watch this movie or this theater show and just, you know, suspend my disbelief, you know, while I'm, you know, engaging in some entertainment. And now it's right. like news is entertainment, yeah. you know, and the news has been blurred with like uh, social media. And so it's all, just like well, people are just picking and choosing where they're going to want to like what they're going to believe and what they're not going to believe. Anger is entertainment. And, yeah. Uh, and if you sprinkle enough truth into something, you know, it doesn't have to be all truth. But if you sprinkle enough in there and, you, you know, you push it toward whatever, you know, bias the, your reader has. Yeah. Or, or listener or watcher or whatever. It's, it's definitely going to resonate. They're going to spend the time. They're going to click the article, they're going to read through it, they're going to click the headline, whatever it you is. You actually go and click in the article, you don't just read the headline? Yeah, right. Wow. You um, actually... Well, because when you do, I, I often read the articles. When, when I see something that's like super egregious, I, I probably know like right off the bat, like, okay, this is, uh, let me see how they're going to try to justify it, right? And uh, an example happened yesterday where I listened to a podcast and I listened to it for a specific reason because I was like, hmm, I thought this person 
Ah, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> too, too many rabbit holes. I, can go down. <laughs> I listen to it, listen to it for a specific reason. Well, in that podcast, the guest said something to the speaker, and it was one line, right? And they said, "Would you do this?" And the person was like, "No." And so then I looked up the guest, and I see like a bunch of headlines, and one of the headlines is. You know, podcast host addresses whether he or she would ever do X. You know, it's like this, like, big deal. It's all caps. And it's like, it, so it's a literally, like, 500-word article that's going over. You know, one-word answer? A one-word answer that was totally, it, it just wasn't even a thing. It wasn't like, oh, they discussed it in great detail. It was the person asked X Host answered why they moved on, and and here we are. There's multiple articles addressing that one question as if it was like a newsworthy thing, and it's like, it's not. It's not a newsworthy thing. You know, we're 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 just. You know that someone's gonna read that and go, oh, is uh, is Johnny gonna you know start fires now or something like yes, that? I like, am. yeah, right. It's it's. Well, I'm being way too vague to make it make sense. No, I mean, well, it makes sense though because. People need to fill a news cycle that's 24 hours a day. Like, right. So you're going to take a two-second clip and write five, six articles on it. Which is just wild to me. Or like, if you have a narrative, you know, and that fits a narrative, then you can do that, you know. But I, I you know, I read quickly. I'm not going to go and, like, like I would uh, something I'm super interested in. I'm just like, I'm going to scan this to see... Because I'm like, I, I don't even want to click on this and give them that, the, that payment. Know, that's all right. they want. Yeah, they but I'm like, well, how, what ching. could they even do in this situation? And it's like, it literally is just a lot of fluff. As if I'm like a 10th grader trying to, you know, fulfill the word count for a, a writing assignment. That's most of the time when I'm just like, hey, let me look up current events that aren't, you know, like just a little bit more fun and out of the ordinary. Not like this stuff that's like dominating the news cycle all the time right. and it's just it's literally like these fluff articles yeah like they're they're but but it's fluff to your bias though so no, this one was like i'm just saying they just don't have any facts or details right. they it's literally like an expanded headline right like you read the headline you're like oh i'm interested enough click on that and then it's like this is three paragraphs of just that like i will be specific about the one i saw it was about bigfoot sightings and then <laughs> you you click on it and then it basically is like, yeah, Bigfoot was seen in the woods. Cops were called. And like, I'm like, why did I just read four paragraphs right. that was an expanded version of a t like one sentence headline so, with no other information? Yeah. But again, you, you add, a, I'm not saying there's truth in that one, but in this one, there it's might like be. you add a little bit of truth. So you can't say like, oh, this is a false article. It's like, it's not a false, false article. It's just wasting everyone's time. And if you wanted to be mad at this person, you could try to be mad at this person through this article, right? Like, it's just, it's just silly to me. Why did we, how did we You're get talking so about Elon, aren't you? No, but like, and that's the thing is like, I can't even. Go back to work. Right, there's so many, yeah. There's so many. Now I'm going to lay off 10% of the people. Yeah, there's so many people, like, see, you, that, are, that are so polarizing for what reason? Like, well, you, you say Elon and Matt automatically get Yeah. Mad. You can't well, It's not. not. No, mic up real quick. You're good. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's yeah. it's a floppy flaccid yeah. it's a flaccid microphone. It's all good. Um, yeah, you just there's people that you can't even bring up without someone just immediately thinking that they know who you are based off of someone that you may listen to, <laughs> which is funny because I know you people, right? Well, it it is like that, um, and I so I read a well, I've read less, but I read a lot of nonfiction. <laughs> Based off of, like, cultural stuff, right? And so if you think that you know who I am based off of my reading list, or, or if you see my reading list and you don't know me at all, you probably think I lean really hard one way. That would be probably really hard to the left, right? And then you get to... The whole Twilight series? Yeah. That's it, just... Funny enough, I did read the whole Twilight <laughs> series. You know what? I'm going to take a little tangent on that. Hold on. Oh. Did you all know that Fifty Shades of Grey is basically a spinoff of Twilight fan fiction? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not basically. It, it, it that's is, mind yeah, blowing it to is. me. Mind blowing. No, I, Tyler Register. I'm going to blame Tyler right now. I'm calling him out. Wow. This is like the mid aughts or what, whenever it was, and he's like, "Hey, man, you ever read Twilight?" And I was like, "No." And this is before all the movies came out and all of that. And I was like, "No, isn't that like a 
girl yeah. book? Like, yeah. I hate to be you know, like... that a preteen girl book? Right, right. Yeah. Like, what, it yeah. is, though, right? Well, when you read it, it reads like a 14-year-old's, like, diary. I mean, it's fan fiction, so... Yeah. I mean, that checks out. I've heard from a couple people that it's, like, terrible writing, though. It's, so. it's not great. So I read the first one, because he's like, you gotta read it, you gotta read it. I read the first one, and I'm like, yeah, this sucks, dude. <laughs> You guys got some new followers. Oh, yeah, right. Nice. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't click on those links. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't click what on those links. What the spam is happening this morning, says Christy. We uh, made it, boys. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> uh, yeah, can we uh, block those people? Um, or can someone translate them first? <laughs> yeah. Because I kind of really want to know now. I'm one of those people like the unknown number calls me. I answer yeah. just out of curiosity. That's not my mean. computer, so I don't care what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> click click that, the link. See what yeah. we want. Your viewers have shot up. You're at 350. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How much are we paying them? Um, <laughs> yeah, so Tyler's like, hey, read this. Read this book. I read the book. He's like, what'd you think? I was like, that was terrible, dude. Why'd you make me read that book? And he's like, okay, I knew you'd say that. Right, right here now. I, I wanted to get you to the second book. You got to read the second book. That's where it all comes together. Right. Yeah. So I read the second book, and he's like, "What'd you think?" I'm like, "Yeah, equally as bad, dude. Did yeah. not like." And he's like, "All right, you've been with me this long. I know it's kind of rough, but um... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading the translation and zoning out on you. Whatever be the problem, 100% solution sitting at home, like, get the love you... All right, I'm not going to read all get that. Get the love you want. Get the lost love planetary back. Get rid of planetary child. tribulations. They're talking to you, Matt. They want you to get rid of your planetary tribulations. Yeah. I agree. Planets, you know, they're acting Planets. fool these days. So I read the second book. Don't like it. He's like, bear with me, right? I knew. I know. <laughs> Don't tell me he says go to the third. So I go to the third. I think the third book is when they have like motorcycles involved, like he rebuilds a motorcycle or something like that. So it's like in. that, that one like, side that note one is like little enough thing. for you to be hooked. So I read that and he's like, All right, now tell me what'd you think? And I was like, still awful. It sucked with a motorcycle. Right. <laughs> still awful. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, I may have been wrong, actually. And then so well I'm I can't like, wait to talk to him about this. Well there's one more book and now I gotta read it. Like, I don't want to. But I'm not going to stop, even though yeah. I'm pretty good at stopping if I don't like something. But, like, whatever. I apparently not. Book. <laughs> like, you... Say, apparently not. That, yeah. you then well, I trusted him for books one through three. And then book you're committed, four, so you just have to read yeah, the book fourth book four Twilight. was just on me. And what's crazy is in book four, they just completely change all the character dynamics anyway. It's like they're like, ah, crap, i got to wrap this up. Let's just go ahead and just switch everything <laughs> up now. It was... It was... Yeah. So I have read the Twilight series. Interesting. I anyway, how did we not. get so off the rails? Because I said that if you were to look at my reading, you'd probably assume one way about me. But because I just... Like, well, we I don't, don't need to look at reading to do that. Right. Because if you, if you know me, you, you assume, oh, that guy... A lot of people assume, like, oh, super far right if you're on the far if left. If we see you. You just look right. like we a cop. Assume. That's yeah. it. I wasn't going to say that. Right. I get all of that. Are you, you a cop? So there's people that I listen to or books that I read that, <laughs> like... Weekends. Right, that I don't even bring up because I already know someone's going to immediately be like, oh, I, I know the type of person you are. Like, okay, whatever. I only read, like, self-help style books, but just enough to tell myself I'm doing okay. Yeah. And I put them down. Yeah. Three chapters down, right. I'm like, good. I got yeah. this figured out. I'm I don't good. want to get into deep stuff. I just yeah. want the shallow, let yeah. me know I'm yeah, doing okay. Yeah, as soon as they go against, yeah. like, what I'm doing, I'm like, yeah. this guy's a hack. He doesn't yeah. know what he's talking <laughs> about. He's just writing this for money. Close the book, move on. What does he know? I read Nothing. A, actually, I read a book that your wife suggested, and it was called. It's called Game Changers. I can't remember the yeah. guy's name. You know, yeah. Yeah. It and, was, it uh, was, I think it was one of those books where it's just like it had some good points and it had some kind of like weird off the wall points. Yes. And so it's you gotta you gotta. But that's the thing about reading. And it's just yeah. like most media though. It's just like just because you read something doesn't mean you like right. subscribe to it 100. percent Like you can read a book and say, well, that was interesting. I've expanded my knowledge base. You know, and you can glean some information from it and then like disregard. The vast lot of it, you right. know, I, but that's to your point, though, I think that's what people are doing is going, oh, well, if you read it, then you are 100 percent on board with it. Or that is now how you feel and you think when you might just be going, well, I just want to see a different standpoint or different point of view. Right. So funny enough, not enough people do that, I think. I've talked about it plenty. So if you've been here for a while, you know that when I when I do actually decide to read the news, I pull up multiple different sites. Well, if I find Depending on who I want to talk to, <laughs> if I find an article <laughs> I like on Fox News, for example, I go and search for a sep completely different 
site to send it to someone or same with it if it's cnn or god forbid msnbc like they're still out there <laughs> yeah i think so yeah <laughs> yeah so I'll, I'll go and try to find it from a completely different site because i know that if i send a news article with one of those you know sites someone's immediately going to assume one way or the other so yeah that's that is basically every facebook comment section on the web is Two people get in an argument, and usually strangers, on like a mutual <laughs> friends post, which is yeah. great. I, that's entertainment in and of itself right there. Just pop into a comment section, and then you see someone post the link, and then you have like the other people are just jumping on like saying how that's not a reliable source, and then they right. post an equally unreliable weird source. <laughs> right. But it's, a, it, it's just... It's just really interesting. I remember there's a, a pretty smart person that I used to know back in the day. Not actual smart, just right. pretty smart. <laughs> and uh, he, it, it was a like he was posting a counter argument, and he cited a uh, a study that was like, yeah, ninety three percent of people said this. So I went and I read, and it was like, oh, your sample group is like seventeen people. And so That's I replied back, and I was like, hey man, like. These stats are a little skewed. You need a, a little bit bigger. Whatever I said, something along those lines. And it was like, really? You're arguing with actual numbers and stats? Blah, blah, you 75% know. of statistics are made up. Right, exactly. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, Take that for what it's Elon worth. Elon said something just like that the other day. Uh, he must have been reading his Twitter. He must have been reading my Twitter. <laughs> yeah. You're one tweet it's not the first time. <laughs> right. huh? You're one tweet from three years ago? Right. Did he read it? Yeah. Apparently so. So yeah, it's just this like big, like long comment back where anyone that doesn't read the post, they're like, "Wow, this guy's really arguing stats and numbers that are right in front of him." And it's like, ah, that's not what I'm saying, man. I'm just like, you gotta choose, you gotta talk to more than 17 people if you're gonna like create a stat that's you're trying to use that's universal, right? It doesn't make sense. But funny enough that you talk about that, I was looking up something else this morning related to gay marriage on post <laughs> and I realized that I posted I totally forgot about this in like 2012 or 2013 I was just like hey on a cow's word of mouth or something like that like out of curiosity does anyone know a church that openly supports marriage equality and I guess I, I, I don't know my <laughs> thought process back then I, I do know. I do <laughs> yeah, right. I absolutely do yeah. uh, I don't know if here's I'm... the pot and there you are with a big wooden spoon, <laughs> no, I, and I, you're I, jumping into the Ocala word of mouth. Of all the things, right. like if you're looking for like a civil discourse with, you know, fact-checked, unbiased opinions, right. that's not the place to go to. You're, you're saying that within with ten years of knowledge on this, right? Yes, hundred percent. I I don't I know the catalyst that made me post that, right? And and I. And it was a genuine question at the time. I just don't know if I was like, it was a genuine question. And I was like, Meh. yeah, let's stir this pot. Let's, let's get this going. It goes, yeah. uh, but anyway, I just see all of these comments, all of this arguing and, and all of that. It's crazy. And what's, so I saw that in a few other posts and I realized I used to be way more, more verbal about my opinions. Oh, same. <laughs> I sent you uh, one the other day, like the other yeah. day, because it's like they pop up from 10, 12 years ago. Right. Uh, just status updates. And I think with the one I sent you, it was just like, hey, remember when we used to just openly say this stuff on uh, yeah. on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wild. It was just Wild uh, it was just usually just silly, nonsensical, oh, yeah. funny stuff. But it was just like, you know, there's some profanity in it. Right. And like, you know, just stuff where I'm like, ah, you know, as a... As, as dads, as professionals, right. you know, middle-aged men. Specifically, we were <laughs> quoting... Uh, someone is quoting Half-Baked. Yeah. It's not even that big of a deal. It's just one yeah. of those, like... Just a very funny, uh, interesting right. quote. Something that we wouldn't normally post on Facebook now. But, yeah, so I, so I see some of these other posts that I've, I've made. And what's crazy is I've made most of them hidden now because I'm like, I don't want... <laughs> not, Smart not, move. No, yeah. I'm not worried. Like, my, my opinion Look, you still stands. you got a campaign to run in the future. Yeah. So. My, no, my opinion They're still stands. And I still feel very comfortable in them. But what I've seen is... Some people that have gone from one side way over on this side to now way over on this side. So specifically someone recently that was like just shaming everyone for everything for, you know, whatever, right? And then I see them on posts about like marriage equality that, you know, they're very, um, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And I'm like, wow, I'm glad <laughs> to know that, you know, in 10 years you've changed. Wait, they, 
So they went from like marriage equality to not marriage equality? No, the opposite. The opposite of way. Yeah, oh, okay. so they were. Because uh, I, I thought you went like they like digressed, and I was like, wow, that's strange. No, 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 no. Just, just the very staunch thoughts yeah. back then, you know, to very like. I mean, they're staunch thoughts now. It's just on the other side of like. You know, well, they, they change. It's it's like science. You know, they got presented with more information and they change your standpoint. Yeah, I, I, I that's I, I feel both ways on that. Okay, you should be able to change, right? And you should be able to, and and that's great. But to go from one extreme to the other is just exhausting to me. Like, what is going on here? I think they might just be an exhausting person, though. Because it's like, there's a lot of people out there yeah, who... they were exhausting then and they're exhausting now. And, and so, I, so I don't think it's so like think their, about, stand, their change of opinion. I think it's just them as a person. No, but but I guess my thought process is you were screaming at me then and you're screaming at me now. <laughs> Definitely the person. Literally the same person in many instances screaming at me then. But my opinion has stayed the same. You got a real screamable face, dude. Right. And you're <laughs> screaming at me now. Like, I'm not listening either way. Stop screaming. Yeah. Like, but it could be any topic, though. Like, I mean, good for them for changing. But it's just like, you know, they just need to learn how to be a, I, a different human being in terms of yeah. not being so aggressive and abrasive then. like, I think people in general, yeah, need to, uh, like, just take a step back and, like, hey, take a beat, right? Yeah. Think about it. I don't know what take a beat means, but yeah. Rot it up like two episodes good. Just means just take a little break. Take a breather. I okay. like it. Bring it back. I like that. Yeah, take that's a my, beat. That's my phrase for the day. Take a beat. And there you go. Yeah, it's, it's. I guess it's good to see people change, but like, I don't know, man. Like, you don't have to go so far. I, I feel like, yeah. Well, some people do, though, and I think that's just them as a person, though, because they, they do feel like they need to express, you know, express that. Just so other people know how they feel. This is like, you know, you can have feelings and keep them to yourself. You know, like, right. and opinions kept to yourself. Like, it doesn't need to always be this public thing. You know, like, I, I'm not ever going there and going, I wonder what so-and-so thinks about this topic. Because I haven't seen them openly post on Facebook about it. They must be a horrible person. Well, like, that goes you know, to the whole, like, silence is violence thing. Like... We're not supposed to talk on things, but you can't not say things. And like, I think it's just confusing to a lot of people anyway. I think that you can just go, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm yeah, I didn't know, like, it depends on the situation. Down. Like, silence is violent. Like, yeah, if you're watching something go down, you know, like you should speak up. But like, it, when it comes to, you know, in the case of like all these, you know, tragedies that are happening, a lot of people rush to Facebook and they, you know, they they phone in their opinions one way or another. And there's people who don't. And it, you know, it's just one of those things where it's, I think it's okay that sometimes you don't have to be so vocal on social media about it. And it doesn't right. mean you do or don't care any little bit. Right. Um, and I think those people are the people that need to go, oh, people need to know that I'm feeling, <laughs> spin the microphone, <laughs> feeling this one way or another, you know, and it's, it's exhausting at times. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of which. <laughs> that was a long intro. Are we going to talk about... <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> Whatever I did to set you off, I'm sorry, listeners. Are we? Uh, yeah, performative activism. Gosh, that's the that's the perfect. performative activism. That's the, the, yes. the perfect name. There's for a it. lot of performative stuff these days. Right. Everything's performative. Yeah. Except yeah. this show. This is the only true bastion of like unwanted opinions in the world. Fact check that. Riddle me that. Yeah. Um, Ocala's number one global podcast. So as we're talking about performance activism, and we're talking about people that, you know, swing wildly, uh, so the reason I brought up, the reason I was looking for, for gay marriage in post when I, was because I was, it, it bugs me. I love that there's so much representation for June and Pride Month, right? Like, I'm so happy for that. The people that felt like they couldn't be themselves can be themselves now. Thank goodness, Right. But the corporations that oh, hop yeah. on oh, it's hilarious. and yeah. exploit it bug the crap out of me. And then you also find out that they also then donate money to political candidates right. who actively work in the disinterests right. of the LGBTQ Which, community. 10 years ago was almost every political candidate out there. Yeah, so it's just one of those things where you find out, you know, you follow it around. It's like, oh, so you're doing this to make money on the front end, but also like actively working behind the scenes to, you know. Right. So it's just not gross it to happen. me because you're following the majority, right? It wasn't like this was like a stance that a lot of companies made when it actually meant something, right? I mean, it means something now, but like when marriage equality wasn't 
a thing. Yeah. Right? Where were you then? Like, no, you waited until most of the country agrees that this is the thing, which, oddly enough, mor- morality often follows laws, right? So, like, oh, you know, there's a lot of people that thought marriage equality is bad. The minute that it becomes legal, within a year, literally, yeah. like, almost 90% of Americans are like, yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. Like, Do you think if, <laughs> if, if murder was made legal that people would just be murdering more? No, because I think that's innate morality, right? Okay. Well, actually, yeah, I do. I think if murder was legal, more people would be like, all right, pow! Don't like what you're saying. There's like a whole series of movies about that. Yeah, it's called The Purge. Yeah, there's like three of them. I'd like, might be an ignorant thought, but I'd like to think that, yeah, it's the innate morality that it, it wouldn't happen like The Purge. Yeah. You know, there would be like a slight uptick of, and those are just like the crazy people that are probably going to like end up murdering someone or killing a cat anyway. Right. But for the most part, people are just going to be like, yeah, that's that's messed up. Yes, I do believe that. I mean, like, marijuana is a great example. You know, people wouldn't even, it wasn't even discussed out loud, like, for years. And now you have plenty of politicians and, you know, CEOs and all of that. Money, money, money. Right. It, it, morality on the surface level, not like actual morality, follows laws. Performative morality. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just going to start throwing performative yeah, it is. in front of yeah. everything. It, it works. Is. In today's world, that works. Yeah. It's perfect. So I, I, I hate to see the performative activism by corporations that weren't involved beforehand. And a prime example of that uh, is, I think you know where you're going is not related to gay marriage or marriage quality or equality in general. It's related to Juneteenth. This. So this. L- let me explain. <laughs> I thought Juneteenth was like a very well-known holiday, but I thought that because I've designed and sold hand fans for 17 years. (laughs) And if you know anything about hand fans, they go to a lot of churches and a lot of outdoor events. And so I did a lot of Juneteenth hand fans. And so I probably learned about Juneteenth, not in school or anything, but probably. Definitely not in school. Yeah, Yeah. I was gonna say, I didn't learn about it in school. I probably learned about it through a hand fan. Public school has failed me. But it seems to be that like Juneteenth now in the past few years has become, it's a, a, I think. Federal federal holiday. holiday? Yeah, Yeah, it's a federal holiday now. And it's it's from when the uh, like National Guard came down to Texas and was like, hey, by the way, y- y'all are free. You've been free for a while. Civil War is over, you know, and, and that that's that, right? So it was like the final um, yes, bastion. To it's use not the term. actual emancipation. It's when they finally told them about right, it. Right, yeah, yeah. They had already been emancipated, so they Crazy. came down and said, hey, you're free. You know, let's get this over with. So anyway, Walmart decides that they're going to have – an ice cream put out that's a Juneteenth ice cream celebration ice cream a celebration ice cream which means that they had to have like a product team a marketing team a focus group it launched in unison with other Juneteenth themed things like t-shirts and stuff like that as well though like so they had like this whole like product launch which I get a t-shirt right i get t-shirts and all of that like there are products that like hey you know i want to be involved what can i do where can i go there's a lot of people that shop at walmart fine but an ice cream everyone loves ice cream everyone does love ice cream but an ice cream a juneteenth it ice seemed cream? tone deaf yeah i think tone deaf is a good uh a good phrase to use it's one of those it. things that comes out and you you look at the corporations and you're like what were y'all thinking did you have like Anybody in your meetings, your prob- probably multiple meetings, did you have anybody who's like representing this cause or this holiday actually with you to like guide you in making these decisions? Or did you just go, well, here's a chance to make money, guys? Right. And in which case, in this, like, it's like it's not because they've pulled all of those items now and recalled yeah. them. And so they're actually losing money. So what a what a weird weird yeah. world we're living yeah. in. Yeah, I'm sure it was one of those trending things where they, uh, you know, Juneteenth is trending heavy right yeah. now. Oh, for sure. We yeah, need to jump on it. Yeah. What can we money do? grab? Yeah, I, do I you got know a new ones? I do, no, I don't. I don't. It was red velvet and something else. <laughs> it sounded delicious. Yeah, no, I, did, I, I, like, like, yeah. I didn't catch the flavor, but I, yeah. So that's the world we're living in today. So when you think that, uh, I don't know, it, it, it goes both ways. And I get that, like, as a, you know, white heterosexual male, there's probably things that I just don't understand. But to me, I, I wouldn't want to be 
<clears throat> exploited, right? Celebrated, yes. Exploited, no. There's that fine line, though, of like, what, when does it go from like celebration and and support, right, to an awareness to exploitation? And I think the companies out there are trying to always toe that line of like, how are we going to profit off this and make us look good, right? But also yet still support these causes. And and in this case with Walmart, I, I think they kind of went too far over that line, and it's just like, ooh, you know. You missed the mark with this one. Missed the mark. Swirled red velvet and cheesecake. Cheesecake. That's what it was. I, I would, knew it was cake, but I was like, is it, is I it would eat cake that so quick. Yes. I, and oh, how do you... Is that on clearance right now? How, yeah. No, I don't think it's... it's yeah. Huge backlash. It says, share and celebrate African-American culture, emancipation, and enduring hope. That was like the labeling. So then like, how why do does come that have to be the flavor? <laughs> like, what? Like, I think it was just one they had in the pipe, and they're like, slap the label on it. Let's go. Oh, uh, <laughs> boy. Celebration edition. <clears throat> Hands high fiving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was like I, I don't know. Maybe that was like their Ukraine support ice cream that never right. got launched in time, <laughs> right. and then like other events, like the shootings, kind of took over the news cycle from Ukraine, and so they had it sitting there, and so they just rebranded it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's Walmart. You know, like that could have been the thing. Speaking of delicious desserts, though, the Mona Lisa got caked. They got like whipped cream or something. It was cake. Oh, it was cake? Yeah, they're in France. They're not going to just have, like, it's not America. They didn't have, like, a tinfoil pan with whipped cream in it. (laughs) Like, this is probably some beautiful artisanal, at least I'd like to think, like, cake that he picked up on, like, one of those many bakeries along the way. I've never been to France, but that's what I imagine it's mostly bakeries. Confirm or deny? No. There's a lot, but. Okay, I got to go. There's not bakeries everywhere. Uh, So there's bakeries everywhere, so he picked one up on the way. But, yeah, dressed up like a woman in a wheelchair. To get handicap access front row to the Mona Lisa to throw his cake at it. You can get, you can push your way to the front anyway. And then he started yelling about save the earth. Did you hear about that? That was the whole thing. It's like save the earth. It was like some environmental. Uh, okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the Mona Lisa is protected by glass. It yeah. is, yeah. and so that's not even really the real one. Cake, the painting, yeah. He just. I've heard that the real one is here. in their vault, and that's like a fake one behind the glass. Because apparently some lady threw acid, some lady threw a cup at it in 2009. Some lady threw acid on it in the 50s. That's when they put it behind glass, and it was actually stolen in 1911. Which who knows if it was ever really returned. Listen, yeah. if you really wanted to make a point <clears throat> and ruin some art, it's not going to be the Mona Lisa because it's yeah. covered in glass, yeah. and you have to stay like 10 feet away from it, right? But if you turn around, there is like a 40 by 80 big beautiful fresco. No one cares about frescoes. I don't know where Fresco is. They, anyway, <laughs> it's amazing how many people care about like Mona Lisa though. Right. It's kind of like, meh, meh. Eh, I wouldn't say. Eh. It. It's mids. It's it, mids. It is mids. At best. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that one hundred percent. There is something about seeing it. I, I will say that it's it's much smaller. I think it's because it's old. That's all. Um, it's I'm mysterious. Yeah, it's not like, that old. To me, I'm like, yeah, it's it's been around a long but, time. That's cool. Uh, all I'm saying is, there's plenty of. Unglassed are all around you. Literally, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Right behind the Mona Lisa. Boom. Right there. Big, huge. Justin, it's performative activism. He didn't actually there want is. to ruin a painting and get <laughs> and on the hook you know for what? like ruining a $10 million painting. At least he threw it at the one with glass. At least the one he's that's out there not doing something. Yeah. You know what? Taking it to the streets. Yeah, taking it to the streets. Yeah. Wonder what he posted on Facebook before. I I read three That's articles trying to, more, trying to get more trying to get more information. She caked up. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get more information, and that's like all they released. It was just like what yeah. he yelled, that's like, "Oh, happened. save the." Does it? But I thought they were like, "Oh, there's like this longer manifesto, or he's with some group, nothing." And it's just like no. really like some dude. It just seems like some dude was just like, "I'm just gonna throw cake today at the Mona Lisa," <laughs> yell about saving the planet, yeah. and like that's that open and close. Like I thought they would be like a deeper dive into that story. There's not real slow Tuesdays. Like, yeah, let's go cake this thing. You know what? Maybe he was sent by MSNBC. That makes sense. That's I've heard that he was sent by MSNBC because they were having a slow news day. Like Huh? I, I think there's plenty of news They're going like, on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I guess there's another fine line <clears throat> between like just posting about it and actually doing something. Like, what are you trying to do? I don't know. If you want to be a real activist, be like those whale people and go buy a ship and go harass Japanese whalers and get abducted. Now that's real activism. 
All right. I'm just funny. kidding. I mean, you know, he could have probably posted ten times a day for a year, save the earth, and nobody. Right. Yeah. yeah. He just went viral with yeah. a piece yeah. of cake, and he's what was that probably a fine? But like, like you, you got to go back to you the know. Roof. That was another thing I was trying to find out. Is like, you know, it's kind of like the guy that shot the water tower. I'm like, what? What? What's the recourse for this? Like, is there recourse? Can they I just start throwing so pie they, at they art? Just politely walked him out. Yeah, yeah. that's what it seemed like. They slap them with a baguette, and they're like, "Get out of yeah, here!" You'd be surprised. They're they're uh, they're not afraid of force in uh, Paris and France. So, um, are they walking? Things around? have changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They used to cut a lot of people's heads off. Used to. Um, they got soft. <laughs> What's they gonna say? I, don't look at me. I don't know what you were gonna say. <laughs> We'll keep talking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I Moving on. Last oh, I was thinking about, you know, just guillotine and all that. You threw me off. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. Sorry. Performative executions, basically, is what guillotines are. <laughs> oh, you talked about, you said he probably posted 10 times and then he went viral with that. And I think that's a super good point. But, like, also, follow it up. Like, give up. What's your plan? That's yeah. what I was looking for. There's no, yeah. there no follow through. He didn't yell out a website. There was no manifesto right. of like saving the earth by throwing cake at art. Like, He'll do better next time. Give him yeah. a shot. This I guess the first try. To me, it's, it's too much like, I'm trying to bring awareness to it. Like, bro, we know. He didn't like, say specifically. It was just like very generic comments too. Like, yeah. save the earth. Like, right. yeah. There are people who are destroying the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course there are. He was arrested and taken to the psychiatric unit. Says the guy destroying art. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just to me, it's like, I, I think that's a really good point is, so the other thing that bugs me is like, all right, what's the plan? Like, I just need to know a plan. Like I, you're yelling at me about it, but we don't know, like, you don't, like give, give me what I can do. You know, well, I, I can't tell you what to do. You got to do the research yourself. Like, well, all right, no, I'm not going to. You, <laughs> like, could, you could potentially buy a Ford electric vehicle. A Ford EV? Yeah, a Ford EV. That might save the earth. <laughs> nah. I mean, my problem with that, though, on that point is just like, yeah, it's just like, but it's hard but like, when you have, you know, in the case of destroying the earth, like, yeah, corporations are destroying the earth. You know, they're, they're mining, they're polluting, yada, yada, yada. And, like, you have these activists, and it's like, yeah, what is the plan? It's like, unfortunately, it's like the, they're doing what they can because it's like, yeah, the entire political system is making money off the people who are polluting. So it's like, unless we literally overthrow the entire government, what the hell can we do when it comes to this? People have been trying to fight this change for a long time. And as long as people are still getting rich off of it, you know, there's not much that like an everyday person can do except the cake on the Mona Lisa. I mean, he can create all the plans he wants, but unless he completely like changes the government, you know, I don't know. Yeah, would we listen yeah, to his plan? Yeah, I don't. I, or be like, that's a crazy dude throwing cake. That's not going to work. I, I, I mean, that, there are people out there with plans, and then it's just like, nah. I think how do you how do you eat an elephant, right? <clears throat> bite by bite. Shoot it first. Okay. <laughs> Oh, is this not a rhetorical question? It's, it, it is a rhetorical okay. question. It's bite by bite. You know, you, you, we can't just go, oh, it's too big. All I can do is yell and throw cake, right? I don't actually know what we can do. Like, no, let's break off into, you know, our little specialties and find what we can do and encourage people that way, right? Like, I, I, I think that that's just a, an easy out. What if go, they keep oh, throwing well, elephants on your plate, though? Well, if you get really good at how to do it bite by bite, you know, you have multiple people taking bites. Then like you get, you, ha you get halfway through eating an elephant and they drop two more elephant carcasses on you. If you want to like not actually, I think that that's the easy way out. You go, well, there's no, there's no, they're just throwing more elephants. That's it. Right. Okay. Well then you're just going to deal with elephants all the time. If you actually decide to make a plan and get people involved in a good plan, then you can affect change. It takes 3%. 3% of opinion to, to actually start affecting a change. In, in Where'd a, you get that a, statistic? I'll cite it for you. I'm just curious if it's made up or not. But at it's, the, it's all made up, sure. At the end of the day, he got us talking about it. Yeah. Right. In some regard. Shoot, granted, maybe I, it worked. I didn't ride my bicycle here this morning. Right. I, it's not a real feasible plan for me at the moment. But he did get some sort of conversation started amongst some people. Yeah. So, I mean, that... Maybe it's just like, you know what? Do you think it's the anyone that didn't already suck. think that the Earth's being ravaged for, you I know? Mean, you know it's a, no, that's the thing. That goes yeah, back yeah. to the beginning of the show, though. It's like, I feel like the people who already believe that are like, yeah, I agree with that, you know? And then the people who are suspending their disbelief and been like, there's no harm being done to the planet with our current, you know, 
economy in place with all of you know what we're doing they're like it's literally fine it's fine everything's fine we're not getting hotter it's fine we're not polluting the ocean it's fine you know this is all just made up stuff you know and those people are going to continually believe that because they're continually watching people who are just saying that to them and they're suspending their disbelief and choosing to believe it because they don't want to be yelled at right (laughs) if you stop yelling at someone and go hey look and, and you make some kind of compromise and go this is one area where for sure we can affect some change, right? I understand that it's, it's all too big, but in this area, let's just try here. You know, that's how I feel about the whole straws thing. Like, I, you know, we're like, oh, we're not using plastic straws anymore. And I know that like, it's a big joke for a lot of people. <clears throat> but to me, I'm like, yeah, I get it, cool. We, the one thing was done, right? Yeah. Like, I don't wanna drink out of a paper straw. Yeah, you know? paper straws are gross. And I'm still gonna use plastic straws when and where I can, you know? But, like, okay, at least we're trying for one little thing. Yes, yeah, it still goes in a big plastic cup almost and Almost quantifiable. That. You can right. look at a thing and go, a change was made. Absolutely. A- ALS, right? The ice bucket challenge. Remember, remember yeah. that? Yeah. Two years ago? And it was like, oh, what is, what, <laughs> what is pouring a bucket of ice do? You know, that's so stupid, blah, 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 blah. Well, then they, like, basically cured ALS from yeah. the funding from the ice bucket challenge. You know, like, it's... It's one specialty thing that probably no one knew about beforehand, or not many people knew about beforehand, and you work on that specialty thing until so, you, you take a big chunk out of it. So what you're saying is we should all start caking. Yes. Everybody cake it. Cake your local it. museums. Yes. But have a plan in place. Yeah. Like, hey, we're doing this because we want to bring emissions down by 2% by you know tackling this one thing here. You know, Like, I hate styrofoam. How can we get styrofoam too. out of here? Right? Like, that's where I... Like, you, you'll get me on that. When you go, oh, we just got to stop emissions. Like, they should have okay. switched. Instead of straws, they should have started with coffee stirs, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, a straw is at least, like, you don't, like, people will grab, like, three coffee stirs and then immediately throw them away. Like, right. talk about, like, a straw is actually, like, useful for an extended period of time. Right. Like, the coffee stirs are the ones that get me. Like, I mean, you could have went with cups and you could have went with stirs, but you chose straws. A lot of people use the the wood. Yeah. I, it, well, they, it, stirs you, now. you just need to get, but, yeah. Anywho. But I'm just saying, you you piece it off like that, and you make it make sense, right? Because when when you just, it's just outrage that we're like, oh, you're right. But but from the political standpoint, you know, and I'm not trying to get overly political on this, but like it's hard not to though. But when you have like a lot of people who don't believe that because I, you know, I personally think that they're profiting off of not doing it, then like, how do you change that though? When they're the ones that are like, well, we have these accords in place and we have these people that actually want this and make this change, but we're not going to actually follow through with any of that. You have to change public opinion. You don't do it by yelling at people, right? So yell louder. Got it. Yeah. Check. He who is louder wins. I'm a fan of the cake. That's all. Let's just cake it. Yeah. I like cake. Let's just cake it. It's way more fun. So we're going to keep kicking art or just caking anything? Anything. Start caking, start caking gas up. guzzlers. We need to cake our politicians. If it's environmentally unfriendly, throw cake at it. He says with a truck in his driveway. <laughs> it runs on four cylinders. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it also runs Enough. on eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've seen you drive the Ultima. You're, you're right. running on That's why I drive the Ultima. Yeah, I can't be. Ultima yeah. runs on six somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. How fast that thing can go with four cylinders. I sometimes feel like it runs on six. I push yeah. that little one point, however many liters, to its limits. Push it to Modern limits. engines are a marvel. Yeah. The, the mm-hmm. amount of power you can get out. Um, anyway. Unbelievable. Well, agree to disagree. I think that, you know, uh, having a plan is a good way to start. But I guess just yelling and throwing things is probably better. You're right. Yeah, it seems to work. So <laughs> it seems to work. I'm not going to bring up the next topic because I feel like we've got to create some space. Uh, what's up with the Ford EV, by the way? Oh, that was an interesting article. The CEO of Ford says he wants, and I thought it was like, according to the title, I thought they made this change, but then I read it and it's like the CEO is pushing for this. He's pushing to make Ford EV sold exclusively online and completely bypass the entire dealer network, which is going to like shake the system up. Because well, because like Ford is one of the big motor manufacturers and they have like exclusive dealers. But his point was, it's like we will save two thousand dollars per car because about two thousand dollars of a car's value is spent on a dealership housing massive inventory and advert. And one third of that two thousand dollars is uh, from you know inventory inventorying these cars, and the other one third 
another one third is advertising the sale of the car. I don't know what the other last one third is, but he's like, if we sell direct, we can set a fixed price. There's no negotiation. You cut the dealer out of it. So you don't have that crappy, crappy car buying experience. We'll save money on the cars and the cars will be cheaper. And then he was also making the point that he's like, we spent all this money to get these cars off the lot and we have no follow through with the post buyer experience once the warranty ends. And he goes about 10 to 15% of people actually go back to the dealership for service. So his point was like, the dealerships can make more money if we save money in selling the car and then have a better post buying experience to incentivize them to go to the dealerships to then get service throughout the life of the car. But electric vehicles don't need as much service, correct? Depends on which one you get. Are there any other? <laughs> I mean, the like current ones answers, now, yeah. yeah, like there's not a lot of quality control and it's not like, but the auto manufacturers are pretty good about like having their stuff. I'm saying like employees, where are all these employees going to go if you start just going like what? directly? Like are you talking about salespeople at a dealership or? Well, I mean salespeople, we're also talking about mechanics because mm -hmm. EVs are supposed to be better, right? Like you don't have to go in. And yeah. You change a battery every three, four years. Yeah, there's nobody changing the oil. There's yeah. no oil. There's no, yeah. Yeah, there's, well, I mean. Yeah, there's there's a lot less. So let, There's quick. less, but there would still be, like, maintenance and stuff like that. It's just going to change, though. I mean, that would be like someone, that would be like someone being like, well, you know, who's what happened to all these carriage builders if we have cars come out now? You know, like, that's just the way it's going. You know, like, yeah, you know, some people will probably lose jobs from that, but some will also just shift, though. Like, you have a lot of technology in them, and, you like, you still have moving parts that still need to be replaced. Like, you don't have an internal combustion engine, but you still have electric motors, and you still have, like, the gear reducers and, you know, all, you know, and the batteries and the, the electronics, and then the interior parts and stuff, too. Are there any other car manufacturers that go direct to the consumer? Yes, <laughs> there is. And that was noted in the article. And, like, you guys say, I hate Elon. It's like, you, you forget that. It's just like, no, I, just, I, I really just hate <laughs> What? <laughs> you I just don't hate him. I hate him. I hate Bezos. I hate all the other billionaires who are just like, you know, like, I don't care about them. You got a soft spot for Elon, though. Yeah, you, you know, for sure. <laughs> well, it gets, you, it gets you guys going, too. So what can I say? But yeah, he went direct. But what 40 v was saying was just like, um, you know, there was some in the article shots fired because they're like one thing that's plagued them is there's like lack of quality control because they rush the stuff to market they constantly change stuff on the cars to like quickly get them out and they're having problems after the fact with servicing them and you know maintenance problems whereas like you know the big auto manufacturers are like well we're going to do this to where we're going to do it right the first time to has, where it's going to have a better heard of the reputation ford has though <laughs> currently <laughs> it, 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 forever yeah it's not like not like they're killing it in the you know, not having quirks. Well, I mean, it depends on what car you're looking at. I mean, you look at like Silverados and F-150s, and I mean, those things are dang near bulletproof. And I mean, like the longevity of them is like up there with like a bunch of other like well-known, long-lasting cars, yeah. namely like Toyotas. So um, they do have something to be said, but they standardize manufacturing and unify and stuff like that. And also if something goes wrong, they can, you know, implement massive change and recall. I think so. that we are going to see a, a change to direct-to-consumer model. I don't know that it's a ultimately going to be a good thing right because <clears throat> then there's no competition within dealerships yeah so I, I i think it's going to head that way i don't know that it's going to be as as good as we would all hope it would be um but i do see it probably you know i think the the consumers are changing and, and not many people want to put up with the uh that was all anymore. That was the point that was like, hey, you don't hear people giving like rave experiences like I had such a lovely time buying a car. Yeah. You know, at yeah, a big at a big like dealership. The, the upper hand. Yeah. Everybody and so like I think that hand. was his point. And then the people buy the car and then they don't ever come back to the dealership. So it was like a paradigm shift of like, if we can cut out that really terrible part of the dealership, which is buying the car. Then we can make them when they go and get it service and throughout the years and stuff like that a good experience where you're sitting in the fancy lounge and getting fed donuts and tea. I do. Uh, I hate the concept of not having inventory readily available, uh, mainly because I get tired of not being able to see what I'm, you know, trying to buy. Yeah. You know, and sure you can look at reviews, but a lot of what you're seeing is like flooded reviews that are bought you know or there's just no reviews at and jd all. power and associates gives everyone that award right i don't even know who they are yeah yeah never met the guy yeah so. but they were like very like loosey-goosey with who they hand these things to so it's that that part does bug me i mean we're already dealing with the inventory issue anyway yeah um and i i just feel like there's the ability to price fix 
with the manufacturers, you know, obviously they're never going to do it. Yeah, I don't feel like we're going to see that two thousand dollars savings. Yeah, you know, it's, they may see two thousand more dollars in profit. Right. But yeah. It's like, hey, it's the price is the price. Yeah. There you go. That's it. But like what th- what they mentioned though is right now there is no inventory. So if you've looked at the price of cars, like the MSRP is ballooned up thousands of dollars over what the manufacturer is saying it should be sold at. And so what they're saying is like in the event of like now where there's scarcity, the price would be fixed. So in, in right now, that would be a good thing because you're going to just pay what the set price is instead of like this $6,000 over, you know, MSRP price, which is, or more that's, you know, current dealerships are charged because like it's only Mustang in the area. If you want it, it's yours for $70,000. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I just, I, uh, it's based off of the yelling that happened in our office a few weeks ago where someone was just yelling, supply and demand, supply and demand, <laughs> supply and demand. Yeah. I'm so sad I missed that. I think that the manufacturer so is just going to do the same thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I, scarcity is always going to drive value. Yeah, but, I mean, exactly. I don't think If it's... you're looking at a house in a neighborhood, it's the only four bedroom with a pool. Right. Yeah. It's worth 100000 more. You're like, well. This is the only oil we got. Yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, we can make more, but. So I, I, I just don't think that um, it's going to, to make a huge difference whether it's manufacturer I, I i ultimately think it's going to be worse for the consumer in the long run in the short term we're all going to be like yeah this is great and then in the long run we're like ah we should have stuck with the dealerships when we could actually yeah. you know negotiate yeah pricing. i mean like it's just, same can be said for like amazon we should have stuck with the corner stores instead of just buying like literally every little thing off of amazon yeah because now we're stuck with them and it's just like i haven't gotten i feel like i haven't gotten two day prime shipping in forever yeah it's like i'll just Go to an actual store store, buy direct from yeah. the person because they're going to ship it in the same amount of time as you are. So it's like you've lost all value to me now. So The the biggest and, and most obvious one for me was the toy stores. Once you see the toy stores go away, it's like, oh, cool. I've got the same seven toys to choose from Yeah, for my kids. And what the heck am I going to do now when I go to a mall and I need to kill time except yeah, there's no toy store. There's no bookstore to go into. Chair like, massage. Right out there in the open. Yeah, but yep. Toy Stores didn't cost money <laughs> so to I go into. See you drooling when you're. See you shaking. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't need to see my extra fat <laughs> just shaking out on display. I don't want to get people too excited as they're just trying to have their Sunday afternoon shop. You know. Why is that person gagging? Yeah, KB Toys though in the mall. <laughs> you go up the, like the little balls with the raccoon tails. You know what I'm saying? Like those brought you in. Like talk. Like yeah. I don't know how a store that had so much curb appeal My will go down. Was the penguins? Yes, yeah, that would go. Slide, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did they make noise? No, not those. The oh. ones Johnny knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. You go. They go up the stair, and then they it goes down the down, slides. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Just one. wait for two seconds. No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Penguin toys. <laughs> yeah, they bounce around. They I've make seen noise, them all. dude. Yeah. They're not penguins. They're elephants. <laughs> yeah. Turns out. You were thinking of a mandrel. Uh, you were thinking of a mandrel. I will take that to my grave. You were thinking of a mandrel. Call to artists for Max. Magnolia Art Exchange, we're doing a call to artists. Uh, I think the next semester opens up in July, maybe August. Um, you can see that information on the Facebook page or maxocala.org. That's pretty exciting. Um, Matt, as someone that was on the steering committee for a long time and uh, the founding committee and all of that. It's got to be pretty cool to see that. Oh yeah, that it's, place being used for what it was meant for. I love seeing it full of like hung art and the studios, like you know, rooms in there. What? Nothing. Keep hung going. art. As you were. As yeah. Is, did that make you laugh? Speaking of elephants. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is there is there art of that nature in there? No, oh. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Just oh, keep yeah, going. Sure, please. sure, sure. No, it's super cool to see it. You know, especially like going to the last art heist event too. You know, like you just seeing it used. But like when it was fundraising in there, it was like basically devoid of anything because yeah. it was just an empty room. So you go in there now and it's like, oh, it's got that lived in feel, which is really cool. And when you have like artists like working in there, you know, and you could be one of those artists, you know, if you apply for the call to artists, um, you know, they put their own like spin on it. And it's like the super creative looking community. It's like you can't help but be inspired when you walk in that place. And I love that about it because you go in there and you're like, I can't think of anywhere else that has that vibe in Ocala. And I don't think there is one because um, it's not a gallery it is like working studio space yeah, it's ever changing yeah it is always evolving yeah and that's it, yeah. the cool thing is like I'm glad you said that is like the ever changingness of it is so unique and so fun plus the artists are super friendly too because they have loved nothing more I've had so many like private 
like studio tours just by like chatting with an artist like, come take a look at what i'm working on and they're so excited to like take you to the studio show it and then there's like other artists there and so like next thing you know like you're getting this private gallery showing and that's some of the most fun so it's impossible to stop in there for less than 35 minutes exactly like no matter what exactly. you're going for you cannot leave in less than 30 and i would minutes. recommend going there during like they have like open hours just because it's like there's not an event because otherwise you're trying to do the event and you're trying to like talk to these artists whereas you know you could just go in there when it's a little bit quieter and actually enjoy that time so yeah it's pretty exciting so i'm excited that uh another call to artists is coming because it brings out some really cool people that yeah. apply um i've already heard from someone that's going to be applying that i'm super excited about heck so. yeah yeah super super neat stuff um our boy Tyler, I know I called him out for uh, Tyler. Tyler, I called him out for Twilight, but uh, Twilight, he Tyler. graced the cover of Three Five Two Preview. What a handsome he's, boy! Oh yeah, it is. He's got a little little gag grouper right that he's holding. Um, pretty cool stuff. I love Three Five Two Preview. My wife does too. Same. Christie's was at least was on listening. Uh, she's heard me say it before. It's so relative to like my life right now yeah you know like it's it, it, every month there are, you know every every one that comes out i feel like you know it's got something in there that we go and and do you know because it's like oh this is great this is relative to what my to my family or like this one is guys trip you know and i think that that's important that uh that guys do get away and, and have that time together and i was just neat to to see that picture and that was a fun trip it's uh, one of the few pieces time. of mail i look forward to yeah, <laughs> like, sure. like bills, Tyler. bills, yeah. bills. Sweet, yeah. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, <laughs> a few pieces of mail. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Love, love that. And uh, I don't know. It's it's just neat to see that. And I hope they keep putting out real good quality. Yeah, content. it's because some sometimes you get, like get some magazines that are like, you know, and you read them and they're like, this is so like not in a, accordance with how I live my life locally. Yeah. And this has no bearing on me whatsoever. And I don't know who these people are who are doing this kind of stuff, you know, but it's like, you look at that and it's like, you know, just. I know they're out there, you know, a lot of the stuff here is relative to horse farms. And so that makes sense. It's not, I don't live on a horse farm. I don't own a horse, right? So yeah. I get that there's going to be a lot of that out there, but 352 Preview, I feel like does a good job of balancing all of that and just, just staying quality and relative. So throwing that out there. And uh, yeah, Dave and Megan with Maven. Obviously, that's you guys' photo. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. I was seasick in the back of the boat. Yeah, were you really? Yeah, that's the first time ever, dude. I was wrecked. Uh, you, really? A yeah. guy that literally works on the water. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was I mean, a, it wasn't necessarily a flat day. Yeah. In yeah. The Gulf. Was a uh, but yeah, that was the first time I've ever been like, I'm out. I'm, really? I went. I've gotten close, but I've never actually house. had it. But. I heard it'll put you under. It was bad. Yeah. Did you I, have like a Dramamine bit bracelet or a sticker behind the ear? I was doing them all, dude. Oh, really? Stickers, bracelets, popping Dramamine like crazy. I was like, I'm just going to go to sleep and wake me up when we get back. I've never dealt with it except for one. Like, I wasn't prepared for it because I've never been seasick. And uh, we went out and it was like eight to 10 foot swells, which was just a nightmare. I thought the boat was going to break in half. I was like, I don't know boats really at <laughs> yeah, all. <that's>... So, <laughs> especially then because I was pretty young. And I'm like, yo, you bounce off one more wave, this thing's just gonna. Yeah, it's just like, then they're fiberglass too. So right. I'm like, knowing that, and you're like, how is this whole thing? How yeah. is this held together? Yeah, and then I got sick, and they thought it was hilarious because I was also they had me up in the front of the boat, which now I'm like, oh, don't do that. Yeah, that's stupid. You're not supposed to be there anyway. I've I've heard from some people too, though. You know, when I was working on the ships, it's like they're like stand at the front and they're like lock eyes on the like the horizon like a fixed point nope because the horizon doesn't here. work <laughs> no 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 but like that here. like that horizon isn't gonna move like you're gonna move but that's not and like supposedly it's something about like resetting your equilibrium right, because maybe like, on the big boat and I, that I might mean, have been it like and i don't know if it does it on a small boat but like on the big boat it would help because there's some guys that would get seasick and they would go do that and they were like yo that actually did help because it's like a, it like tricks your brain to be like okay that's your flat level ness right there and you can focus on that and like you know so it's kind of like when you're walking around a ride you know like oh if hey this is flat ground that's movement big swells on a little boat do not go to the front of the boat that is not where you want to be it will throw you straight off and or waves will crash over and throw you down so or if you time it right you jump right as it goes up and then you get launched was it you that shared that qualified captain video with the girls that jump yeah. off the boat <laughs> oh and the girl that jumps off the front she jumps yeah. right oh my gosh yeah she jumps right off the front and, like i was i thought there was sound on there but i didn't have any sound because like i thought like you were gonna hear kaboom boom yeah because yeah. i wouldn't i 
I would not want to hear the sound of them just even screaming. Like, I, thank goodness, they shouldn't have been doing what they were doing anyway, but thank goodness the captain at the time was quick enough to like, all right, pulling the cord, throwing it in neutral, yeah, that was you know, crazy. stopping that motor right I've away. jumped off moving boats before. I generally think it's an like okay practice um, if you're doing it safely, but you know, you should be going like off the sides and away from that propeller, not you off the front. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you're going like 25 miles an hour. Yeah. That, that ground, that ground, that water hits hard when you're going that fast. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Have a Friday.